Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I am an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to build the second half of our quartz production line. Before we get started with that, though, if you want to be a member of the awesome old guy gaming community, you can find the Discord link down in the description of the video and in the About section of the channel. Also, be aware that I do live stream several times a week. Best thing to do is join up on the Discord where I will announce those streams because my schedule is somewhat fluid. All right, let's get started. So, uh, as you can see, I have set up uh, the first half of my quartz production line. Um, so let's talk about what's happening here. So we're going to start at this side. So we have uh, two lines coming in on Mark II belts from two miners that are down. I don't think we can. You can kind of see the tops of them down there, but there's two pure quartz uh, deposits down there with Mark I miners on them, each one of them producing 120. Uh, product per minute both of them together with these two belts are bringing in 240 product per minute okay um, so those are all coming along here I built the built the little roadway I also used stacking conveyors because I may be running some other product along this uh, this little section too uh, for the future and then this is all just kind of coming down into the floor underneath and popping back up over here there's a splitter down here we're gonna look at all of that in a little while uh, the, and then coming up through these two uh, mark to uh, conveyor lifts. Now, this line here is a Mark I belt, and the reason for that is because um, each one of these constructors that are producing silica for us that we're going to need for our windows uh, only take in 22.5 per minute. So both of them together are only taking in 45, whoops, uh, 45 per minute. So uh, we have Mark I belts on here. This side, however, is producing quartz crystals. These guys take in 37.5 per minute. And so what we had to do here is keep this to Mark II uh, so that these uh, these two constructors wouldn't be starving, okay? Because the, the Mark I belt um, can't keep up with uh, 37.5 uh, per minute, okay? Um, so that's what's happening in, on the input. And as we have already looked at, these two constructors are producing quartz crystals, and these two constructors are producing silica. Um, the inputs on all of these together, we have two at 22.5 per minute, and we have two at 37.5 per minute. If you do the math on those, they come out to a nice, clean, even 120 product per minute, uh, and that's exactly what we're feeding it. Okay, let's take a look at what's happening over here now. Um, so, the way this is set up is that the constructors are sending half of their output to the awesome sink to generate coupons for us and the other half they are storing in these containers and it looks like this one has actually filled all the way up um, let's see is this one filled up too yeah it is okay so the idea here is that at, at least at this point where we are in the game right now we don't need a lot of these crystals we need some but we don't need a lot and likewise we don't need a lot of the silica um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a full uh, storage bin of those two products and then the rest we're just going to throw into the awesome sink so now that we are full up here what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to I'm going to remove this belt okay and what that's going to basically do is now it's going to send everything um, into the awesome sink um, and well, actually, no, you know what? We don't need to do that. I, we don't need to do that because it's, it's already doing that because everything's backed up here. Um, so it's just going to throw everything out now to the awesome sink. So we're good. We can just leave it the way that it is. Um, because again, I don't need at this point in time anyways, I don't need more than a full storage bin of this product. In fact, I don't even need that much, but we might later on down the road, in which case, you know, we'll, we'll fix it at that point. Okay. So yeah, we're good. Uh, because these are all backed up, everything is now just going to be pushed out uh, and sent over here to the awesome sink. Um, by the way, uh, we do currently have 12 coupons, which is great. So those are, uh, we're working on those. I have, you know, the quick wire going into here. I am going to tap into the other uh, Caterium deposit over that way, but we need explosives to remove the obstruction first before we can do that. Uh, that's why I left this area clear so we can set up a second Caterium uh, production line for for the awesome sink okay so hopefully that all makes sense um and the output by oh i wanted to talk real quickly about the outputs too and 
what we should do now that I think about this. No, we, we're good. We're good because um, this side, these guys output a, a 37.5 per minute. So that's 75 per minute between the two of them. And we are running that all along a Mark II belt. Okay. Um, so, so everything from going from this splitter into this merger, or no, I'm sorry, from this merger is Mark II to support the 75 per minute. On this side, however, we're only outputting a total of, uh, uh, yeah, 20, whoops, sorry, 22.5 per minute. So basically 50, 50 per minute between those two. Therefore, uh, we only need a Mark I belt, which can support 60 per minute. Okay, hopefully that all made sense. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to pretty much build the same thing on the other side. Uh, so let's get started first with setting up our input. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this conveyor lift hole and you'll notice that these both of the conveyor lift holes are on the seam and also in this, the center of those tiles. Uh, but we do wanna leave an opening here um, so we have like a little, you know, kind of a roadway and whatnot. Uh, so we're going to come all the way to here, make sure that's over the seam and also in the center of the tile like that. And then we're going to go over two more and do the same thing. Make sure that's on the seam and in the center of the tile. That's a beautiful thing. Okay. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take, um, and we're going to, let's, let's actually get the underneath part done first. Yeah. Let's do that for next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these foundations temporarily and we're also going to remove these foundations so we can see what's going on underneath so let's jump over here we'll take that off momentarily all right so we want to take another one of these um foundations here except for i'm going to put a thick one here temporarily because i want to use the longer uh the longer conveyor hole uh for for uh alignment purposes that's what <laughs> my brain's not working for alignment purposes okay now let's select that conveyor lift hole we want it to be directly across from that one on this edge right there okay good now what we're going to do is we're going to grab another stackable conveyor and we're going to bring it over here with the line but we're going to bring it this way four instead of two and the reason we're doing that is because we're going to make a double 90 all right one two three four there we go all right and now we should make a nice clean double 90 into there looks good looks very good okay now what we're going to do is we're going to remove uh don't stand on it we're going to remove this we're going to grab a mark two um and we need to set this to reverse mode so that the input is on the top um and the way we do that is we uh, hold down R and we go to reversed and now we see the orange input on the top and I think we want to go up two um hmm. usually it'll show the show a line leading to it oh it did there okay for some reason it wasn't popping up there so that's nice and level going into there beautiful now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a lift here and put it down here and because we're in reverse mode that should be the output which it is and those two should be level with one another which they are beautiful okay let's get rid of this for a second now next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back over to this side oh by the way you can see that I did extend the platform um, and I put more of the concrete uh, pillars down below really like that look it's uh it just it feels right you know it needs like it needs the support even though the game doesn't really care uh, and I just like the look of it, and it just feels right. That's all I can say about it. <laughs> okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to grab the Mark II belt. We're going to see how far it'll go before it turns red. Okay, so it'll go to there. So let's go back to this guy. Okay, cancel that. Um, we're going to select this foundation. We're going to press R and go into vertical mode. And we're going to go down three, like so. And then we're going to remove these two. This is temporary. Um, and let's also, I, just because I know we're going to need to do so, let's zoop um, this over to here. Again, this is all temporary. This is We're just doing this for alignment purposes down here. Okay. And I think, too, 
what we want to do is I think we want to zoop this way temporarily this is just you know if you guys remember earlier on several episodes ago when we were working over there you know I was I, oh shit almost fell off <laughs> I was you know struggling with trying to get everything lined up and I was doing it the wrong way because first of all I was working from down below instead of up above and secondly you know using these foundations like this helps us get our under the floor stuff lined up nice and neat so yeah this is a much better way to do it okay so let's tap into there with a mark ii and we're going to bring it as far as it'll go here um and make sure it's on the edge and pop it in place and then we're going to run this over to here and we'll put it right maybe there temporarily all right now next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a splitter and we're going to line up the splitter with the belt making sure the input's here and it looks like everything's lined up beautiful now let's redo this belt so it goes directly into the splitter like so very good all right we are now finished with all of this stuff let's get rid of it um there's also a little support thing under here see if i can grab it yeah that doesn't need to be on there either whoa just about fell off again okay now next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, we're gonna route this new line over to this side because it makes sense to do it um yeah to switch that over okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this and you'll notice that the product is not actually flowing uh, on the belt and the reason for that is because sometimes when you attach a splitter or a merger um in a in a the center of a line it doesn't always work so in that case all we have to do is just reattach the belt on the output and well oh, sorry sorry that's not what I meant to do try that again uh, reattach it on gosh dang it it keeps snapping over there <laughs> cut it out game okay slowly there we go that's what we wanted to do uh, and then it works so yeah just keep that in mind if you ever attach a splitter or a merger uh, on a line that already exists it might not work on the output and if it doesn't then just reattach that output and then it should kick in okay good so we got that set up so this line is now feeding this chain uh, because it's all on the right hand side okay now let's go over here and get this part set up so what we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, I think we want to put some splitters in place first let's get rid of this um i don't know if this will line up or not oh yeah it will because it's on the seam yeah okay i had the foresight to put this on the seam so look at us and our bad selves uh, so we're gonna put that there and then we're gonna put this one here like so beautiful all right and then we can run uh, from here into here and from here into here products moving everything looks good Okay, let's go back over to this side now. Oh boy, that was close. <laughs> Double jump there. Um, let's grab a Mark II lift. And this one we want to set back to default because uh, we need the input down below, not up above. Um, okay, so that is still the input. Okay, hold on. Let's add it down below then. There. And that should connect right on into there and do we see product coming up yeah we see product in the belt okay so we're good uh, let's do the same thing here uh, we want to make sure that the input is down below and the products moving up into the belt and we're good okay I believe we are finished with everything down below now uh, everything's nice and straight looks good so if we do happen to be down below and we're looking up and we can look at that and you say that is very nice and clean lines and it's just absolutely gorgeous okay so let's go ahead and replace our floors okay we're in good shape all right let's get started with the the main build now what we're going to do next is we're going to put in 
a couple of these with the output going that way and one here with the output going that way excellent now we're going to grab a splitter and we're going to put it in the center and the middle uh, we know that it's in the center because it's on the seam and it's in the middle because it's in the middle and also we can see that it's lined up with the other one we want to make sure the inputs on the right hand side and we're going to do the same thing over here beautiful 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 okay mark two into here mark one into here okay if you didn't catch uh this the first time the reason we're doing that is because we're we're going to set up the same exact thing and so these guys need 37.5 per minute so they need 75 per minute in that's why i have to do mark two on this side but these guys only need a total of 50 per minute 22.5 for each so they those are fine with mark ones okay so we got that done now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab constructors and we're gonna set those up um, without uh, input on this side we're gonna hold down control so it lines up with the other ones and make sure it's right in the center of each one of the foundations we're gonna do four of these bad boys Very good. Okay, and then what we're going to do is... Um, uh, okay, I screwed something up. I think I need to push those out a little further. Wait, did I? That should go in there in a nice 90. Um. Oh, I see what it is. I got to... I, do, I don't have those in the... I have those on the seam. They need to be over one more. Okay. So they must have been lining up with something else. Wait a minute. No, those are lined up, right? Because we saw the green line. These are too close. This is the problem. Right? These are should be perfectly aligned with those. Yeah, they are. Okay. Um, so let's do it from this angle. Oh, I got a basket. Wait. No, that was right. Hold control. Bring it back to... No, not to there. There's the line. Okay, so that is lined up perfectly with that. And we should be able to... Um, put a belt into here at a nice 90. Okay. Yeah, the thing about this game, man, is it looks... Sometimes you're setting stuff down and it looks right, but it actually isn't. And, you know, I don't actually need to put Mark II's on this section now that I think about it because um, we're only taking in 37 per minute. So these can actually be Mark I's. Let's just do that to save a little bit of materials. We want to be as efficient as we can. But this has to stay Mark II. Okay, very good. Um, so, yeah, let's just set this to a Mark I. Now, um, let's try this again. So these all should just line up with each other. But we're going to double check it as we go to make sure I didn't screw it up. Okay, that looks good. And this final one should go... Yeah, that should be right. No, that one is still off. It's not a perfect 90. Why is that? That's a perfect 90. That's a perfect 90. This one is not. So it means that it's too far out. Now it should be correct. Beautiful. Okay. That is done. Now, we're going to set these up exactly like we did 
on the other side. Um, so these are going to be the crystals. And these are going to be the silica. Okay, that's done. Very good. Um, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to... i got to look and see what I did over here. Uh, we need to put Mark 1s on all of these facing this way. And... You know, now that I think about this, I th I don't think I'm going to set up, I don't think I'm going to split this second wing, uh, because we already have two, uh, you know, a full thing of crystals and a full thing of silica. Um, I'm just going to feed these directly into the awesome sink, and you know, if later on I, I realize that I need more, um, and I can't support it by turn, you know, by, by turning these back on, or effectively starting them up by grabbing the product out of it. Um, then I can add more. So for this one, let's just throw this stuff directly into the awesome sink. I think that's what we should do. Uh, so let's grab an awesome sink. And what we want this to do is we want this to be smack dab in the middle uh, with the input. And we want to bring it back so it's lined up with the other one, which it should be. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Um, we're going to put a mark to... Um, conveyor on here and pop it out that way we're going to put a merger on here with the input or the output going into the awesome sink okay that's good uh, now what we're going to do over here is we need to put uh, mergers on here with the output going that way and one with the output going that way we put splitters on here with the Splitter there, splitter there. Okay, this can be a mark uh, one belt. And uh, we shouldn't have to mark one into that, or I mean belt into it, because it should already be connected. All right, so this on this side, because these guys are outputting in uh, together uh, only 50 per minute. This part can be Mark 1. So what we'll do here is we'll Mark 1 out to here. And we'll line it up with the... Uh, I think that's lined up to the conveyor, not the merger. So I think we're going to have to go back one and then two more. And then pop it in. There we go. Okay, good. So that's in there, and then this one we want to be Mark two because together these are going to be outputting 75 per minute. And again, we want to come to here and then go back three. One, two, three. Oh, I went up too high. Let's try that again. Oh, that's... Uh, yeah, that's that's actually, I think, is lining up with the merger. Okay, so go back two and come up two instead of three. There we go. Um, nope, this needs to be mark two, not mark one. And I did make this a mark two lift, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, I think we're good to go except for power. So let's go ahead and grab a power connection from you. And we'll bring it out to this intersection here. And then connect that up. And then over on this side. Oh, I disconnected my Katerium line. Didn't realize that. We need to get that back up and running. Okay, so let's bring this pull to here. And bring this pull to here. And bring this pull to here. Get that back up and running. All right, and then we just... Uh, nope. We go here to here. And here to here. Here to here. And here... 
to here. There we go. And we're off to the races, guys. Guys and gals. Oh, fun stuff. Okay, so what have we done? We ha What have we done? <laughs> what did you just do? Uh, we have set up two uh, separate quartz production lines. Um, the first one is making sure we have a full storage bin of silica for making windows. The other one has is making sure we have a full storage bin of crystals uh, for research and whatever else we might need them for down the road. The second one is just purely feeding product right into the awesome sink to get some nice coupon production going for us. Okay. So, yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay, what's what's next? Let's take a look at what's next. Um, sulfur. We're going to work on sulfur next. We have two sulfur nodes down there. I think those are normal nodes. I can't remember, but I'll have to go down and look at them. Uh, but my plan is to bring the sulfur up to here. Um, and let's temporarily set down an assembler. It's not, it's not where it's going to actually be. I'm just putting it down so we can look at it. Um, and what we use sulfur for... Uh, at this point in the game, we're going to need it for other stuff later on when we get the higher tiers. But for right now, we need it to make black powder. And then the black powder we can use to make explosives to, to remove obstructions. The first one being that uh, boulder that's um, blocking our other caterium node. And then any excess black powder that we, that we make, we will, again, just feed right into an awesome sink. Okay? Um, and... The nice thing about this, this is going to be super easy because it just takes sulfur and coal in. We don't have to process anything ahead of time. It goes right on into here. So it's going to be a pretty, uh, well, at least the sulfur part of it, I should say, is going to be pretty easy. Now, the coal part of it, um, I'm trying to decide what to do about that because we have, uh, we have a pure coal node right over here. 282 meters right down that way. I want to dedicate that entire node to steel production, that pure node to steel production. So our next closest coal node that's not being utilized is 900 and some odd meters off that way. Um, so we have a couple of options. We could tap into the pure coal node temporarily to get some gunpowder production made and stored up and then switch it over later. Um, or I could just go ahead and run the coal line that's way out there over to here so we have it and you know and we'll use it for the gunpowder initially but then we can switch it over uh, to something else later on like some additional steel production um so i think that's what we're going to do that means ladies and gentlemen that what i'm going to do off camera is i'm going to run a line from the sulfur nodes up to here get that part of it set up and then in the next episode we're going to go do some exploration and we're going to go over and get uh, to that coal node. We're going to see where it is. We're going to set up, set it up so that we can start shipping it back to here. Now, at some point, I want to also get into um, using trucks for transport. And depending upon, you know, how rough the train's going to be and whatnot going over there, we might actually try that out. I've never used trucks in this game for transportation. And, you know, along those lines, just so everybody's aware, I'm getting close to the point where uh, uh, I'm into new territory. So when I played this in, alpha, uh, in Update 4, I, I got to steel, but I never really got past steel. I, I started making some of the, um, you know, the steel product, but then, you know, then at that point I didn't play anymore um, for various reasons. Uh, so we are getting really close to brand new territory even for me, which is really exciting. So I'm looking forward to learning uh, with it and look, learning along with you guys as we continue this awesome series. That mountain is just the coolest thing over there. So yeah, that is the plan, guys. Um, you know what? Actually, we have a little bit of time left. You know what we're gonna do? Let's um, let's let's do some quartz research now that we have some stuff to work with. So I'm gonna grab a couple of these because uh, one of the things that quartz is gonna get us. I don't know if we need this or not for research. So let's just grab a little bit. One of the things that Quartz is going to get us is the Explorer. And it might actually be fun to have that uh, when we do do our next exploration thing. So let's take a look in here. Oh, we got zip lines now too. Awesome. Okay, so let's go to uh, Quartz. Okay, so this needs reinforced plates and crystals. 
Uh, so we'll start the research on that. And we, we need this then to build the Explorer and I think maybe a couple of other things. Okay, that opens up signal technologies, which requires us to make five of the oscillator thingamadoodles. Um, so we should be able to make those just in here. All right, so we got five of those. Let's go here and go back to quartz. Select that and three second research, beautiful. And that unlocks the Explorer. Awesome, man. Okay, so we need uh, we need some frames uh, and 10 oscillators. What is this? Frequency mapping. Oh, this is the map. Oh yeah, we need this too. Okay, so I need, um, I need 20 oscillators in total. <clears throat> I'm gonna need to make 10 batons and we're gonna need to grab some frames. Let me go grab that stuff. Okay, we have everything for the Explorer. That's gonna take five minutes of research and the map's gonna take five minutes. So let's get the Explorer started now. And I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me, work on getting the 10 beacons going. Okay, so we got the beacons and <coughs> I'm just gonna cut the camera here. I'll wait for the Explorer research to finish and then I'll get the map started and we'll build the Explorer and check it out um, before we end the episode. Hey, I figured while we're waiting, let's uh, let's put some more windows up now that we have some silica to work with. Uh, all right, so what we were doing here is I think we're going to keep you around the doors concrete and we were going five up. Two, three, four, four more. And uh, also over over the door. And then, um, do we want to make the whole section windows? Let's try that first and see if we like it that way. If we don't, then we'll, we'll switch it up. All right, so let's grab a window here. And we are in zoop mode, so let's just run them across this way. And the top pieces are concrete. All right, now what we want to do is go to the customizer and we're using the white swatch. We'll paint all of these white. Okay. And for the concrete, we're using the, the blue swatch. So all this should be blue. There. Okay. That looks cool. <clears throat> um, I think, yeah, I think we'll just keep the windows all the way across like that. Um, we'll have the corners and the doorways be surrounded by concrete. I don't know. That just kind of seems like that's the way it should be. And let's build this up five. And this up five. And we need a cross piece going here. We want to remove these and use the windows here. I wish it would copy uh, the color of the item too. Maybe there is a way to do it and I'm just not doing it right. I'm not sure, uh, but that would be useful. Okay. And then let's go to, I can cycle through the swatches, but I don't know how to reverse through them. Ah, oh, shit, I missed it. There, that's the one we want for the concrete. Did we try and do these as blue? Actually, let's just look at that. Hmm. I'd like it to be a darker blue, because that's what, kind of more like a baby blue. Not that I have anything against baby blue, but it's just not what I really would like to have. 
Uh, let's look at this. Let's play with this custom swatch for a minute. Okay, so customize left, customizer menu, right mouse button. How do I work with this? Oh, edit. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. So I think what we want to do is load preset. Okay. Oh, all right. I see what's going on here. This is brightness or intensity. This must be one of <clears throat> this must be saturation maybe and this one's hue or maybe the other way around. So, yeah, let's uh I kind of like that blue there. Yeah, let's keep that all the way there. And let's try that. Okay, we'll save it. We're going to call this OG Blue. Oh, guess my caps lock's key is on. OG Blue. Save preset. So that is primary color of blue and I guess secondary color of black. Is that what we're talking about here? Oh, wait a minute. Where did it where did it save? Um, OG blue? It didn't look like it saved. Okay, let's try this again. That was all the way over there. This was right around in here-ish. Save. OG Blue. Save preset. Do you have to do the other one too? So let, what if we just do a blue and a black? So OG Black. Save preset. Select color. Oh, you know what? I don't think I selected the color. I think I canceled it. Okay. All right. So that's a little more purple than I think I want it to be. So let's go back into here. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Save. OG blue. Select. It doesn't look any different. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, I'm, mm, I'm still not necessarily happy with that, but I'll tell you what. I'll mess with this off camera. Uh, let's go back. Our research should be done by now. I'm thinking I want it to be a little darker, not quite as vibrant as it is. Uh, where are we going? We're going this way. New awesome. Building unlocked. Okay, so we now have unlocked the Explorer. Let's get the map research going. Can't afford... Oh, uh, wait, why not? Didn't we just make 10 batons? Did I put them over here? Oh, I did. Okay. Quartz and map research. Start research. That's going to be awesome. And then I'm, I'm not sure what the last two things are, but we'll definitely find out. Okay. Um, let's make ourselves an explorer. So we... Where do we do that at? Is it a building? It did say new building unlocked, which seems kind of weird. Transportation. Yeah, right here, the Explorer. Okay, so we're going to need five motors, 15 batons, and five um, 
some other kind of frame. Heavy modular frame. Oh, man. Okay. We might... We're going to have to... We're going to have to do something here to get a heavy modular frame. So what do we need for that? Advanced steel production. All right. So do it. So to do advanced steel production, we're going to need 200 steel pipes uh, and motors. I actually have some motors. I found some uh, down by one of the crash, you know, the hard drive crash sites. So I have those, but unfortunately I don't have the heavy modulars. And in order for us to get the heavy modulars, um, we are going to need to be able to produce steel pipe. And in order to produce steel pipe, um, uh, can I do that here? I cannot. Well, it doesn't matter because we don't have steel anyways. All right, well, I guess the Explorer is going to have to be put on hold for a little bit longer until we can make those heavy 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 frames heavy modular frames so our exploration for the next episode is going to be on foot uh, but i do want to get sulfur going next so the plan for the next episode is going to be to get the sulfur hooked up and then go on an expedition over to the coal node that's off to the south west ish of us it's about 900 meters out so it'll be a nice little trek for us and we'll have some fun, do some exploration in the process, and get um, some gunpowder or black powder going. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.